This is Debbie Dashinger. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream podcast. My guest is back. She is the award-winning filmmaker and visionary author of best-selling books on consciousness, science, and energy medicine. Caroline Corey will be here in just a moment. And this show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for Webby Awards, and it is, as we speak, in contention right now for a Coalition of Visionary Resources Award. And we were just featured in Welp Magazine as one of the top best 20 podcasts to listen to this year. So I thank all of these outlets for their kindness in recognizing the show and the material and our guests. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. You can find them to become a facilitator or take a course at drdanehere.com -E or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm about to offer, within a month, I'm going to be offering a five-day challenge. For those of you who want to know what it's like to be interviewed on podcast and radio and also really understand what you're doing, have the full package put together and actually get results, join me in the challenge. For now, I'm gonna give you a gift, but when you sign up for the gift, I will alert you when the challenge is on. The gift gives you templates and videos on how to do exactly what I'm talking about so you can be visible right now. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. Caroline Corey is back here today. She's been on the show before, and she's going to be talking today about her latest film, which I have seen, called A Tear in the Sky. It's out on May 10th. Put it on your calendar. If you're into this subject, you will want to see this movie. Throughout her life, Caroline has had numerous UFO encounters, as well as ESP and precognition experiences, which led her to existential topics, the study of consciousness, and the mechanics of the universe. After teaching energy medicine and consciousness work, Corey founded Omnium Media, an entertainment platform for topics on the human condition and the nature of reality. Besides writing and producing, Corey appears regularly as a guest expert at major conferences and TV shows, including The Unexplained with William Shatner and History Channel's Ancient Aliens. Her movies have won nine film awards and two nominations at film festivals. I actually think that's going to be old information, considering A Tear in the Sky is now out into the world. And her latest film that we're talking about today, A Tear in the Sky, will be available May 10th and after on many platforms, including Amazon and iTunes. If you'd like to find out more about her, go to Omnian Universe dot com. And with that, and with much excitement and ado, I welcome Caroline Corey back to the Dare to Dream show. Yes, it's so great to have you here. Hey, Debbie, how are you? It's so good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, it's been four months, but a lot happens in four months. In your life, a lot happens. <laughs> I know so much, uh, especially for me with this new movie. By the way, it's already out. It's, it's out May 3rd, but people can pre-order it. But then I think May 10th is when it becomes available more widely. So I'm just so excited about this one, Debbie. You've seen it, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I want to deep dive into it, and we'll do this gently so folks can follow us. So the first thing is, this award-winning documentary, Tear in the Sky, takes us on a journey into the UFO, UAP, UAP phenomenon. And I wanna start with the kind of equipment that was used, the technology that was used to gather the scientific data for the film. 
Yeah, so what happened is what I wanted to do with this film is not just rehash the information that's out there that, you know, the UFO phenomenon is real, but the government is hiding it from us. And, uh, you know, or here are some videos that look credible, who took them. I mean, this information is already out there. As a filmmaker, what I try to do is to think of, solutions as opposed to just problems and in the in the case of ufos i thought uh, let's just instead of analyzing what's out there where we're at let's see if we can recreate it is it possible to go out and capture some real UFOs, um, but from a scientific perspective, how would a scientist go about something like that? Um, this would uh, mean that you need a multitude of instruments. And I'm talking, you've seen it in a, <laughs> even in a trailer. It's crazy. It's an, in, like, um, a huge amount of equipment from optical, of course, cameras, all sorts of cameras, to spectrum analyzers, to radiation detectors, to, to magnetometers, to all a whole range of equipment used at the same time and from different angles. Uh, because when you do that, you start to have correlations, time correlations across multiple instruments that use different technology. Now that data becomes scientific. You see, and so that's the reason why, uh, for example, we had, of course, the regular cameras, but we had night visions, which go, which see into the infrared, but we also had the FLIR cameras. For those who know this, the FLIR is an entirely uh, much larger infrared spectrum. It's like military grade. And instead of using one, we use eight to cover the entire sky. So when you do that and you're doing it uh, over five days and five nights not stop, you start collecting a huge amount of important data. And so when you study that data scientifically, now you, you arrive to very credible, real information about what it is that you're observing. So this has never been done before. <laughs> in this way at that scale, as you saw in the movie. Uh, that's the reason why I really, I'm so excited and I really think everybody who's into the subject should be looking at the type of instrument, instruments and devices that we brought along and how we went about it. Yeah, and there's also a very impressive cast of real people, professionals that are utilized to gather the data and then to research the data and start to put it together. Talk about who was there on hand for the filming, who retrieved the scientific data and who even got the um, instruments engaged so that you can collect everything you did for the film. Yeah, so uh, what was fascinating was we were able to work uh, with the guys who were on the Navy ships, if you recall, the Nimitz encounter was this, this huge deal. The Pentagon, the Navy uh, put out these, uh, these videos, the tic-tac-like objects that were behaving very strangely. And they said, hey, this is true. This is real. This is from us, the Navy, from that ship 2004. Uh, we don't know what it is. This is a UFO. And so uh, two of the direct witnesses, um, Gary Voorhees and Kevin Day, were on that ship. And uh, these other guys, actually, they started a group. Um, these are the guys that ended up in my film. Uh, in fact, Kevin Day is the radar guy who he was the first one to detect this object on his radar. And so to me, that was amazing because now we're bringing the real element. It's not just science, some impersonal uh, story, but now we're bringing direct witnesses from the Navy, you know, who can tell us their story. Uh, and with that, part of uh, the group was two uh, very important scientists. One of them is uh, a, an expert in exoplanets. So all he does is look for 
things, objects, phenomena, phenomena in the sky. So, so he's um, Kevin Knuth is incredible for that. Uh, Matthew Shadakis, he's a, um, a, a physicist as well. His uh, expertise is in dark matter. Therefore, he's used to looking at radiations and energy in space. So they were the ones who were analyzing the data. More importantly, we had David Mason. Now this guy, oh my God. I mean, we were so blessed to have him. He owned most of the equipment, if not all actually, uh, that you saw, which is incredible. I mean, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars that he let us use for this expedition. Plus he's an inventor, he's an engineer. So he invented this technology, um, these devices that capture the light pattern coming from an object in space and converts it into sound. And then you can study that sound and project that sound. I mean, it's so cutting edge. It is so incredible. We were so incredibly lucky to have that type of sort of cast, you know, from the human experience to the scientist, to the technology inventor. So uh, this film is, is insane just because of that. Yeah, for sure. You know, at one point, one of the gentlemen you just mentioned, Kevin Day, he's being interviewed towards the beginning of the movie. And for folks who don't know, he was OSSC of the USS Princeton and currently co-founder of the UAPX company. And Kevin tells the story of the aftermath that he experienced from being on the USS Princeton. And I got to tell you, I mean, first of all, God bless him for his vulnerability and transparency and speaking his truth. My heart broke for him and what he went through. And the fact is, he's not the only one. So talk about that. What happened? What did our government put these people through? Yeah, that was an incredible moment in the movie, actually, when I was interviewing him. Uh, I could just feel his heart, you know, just totally torn and broken because of that experience. And I'm so happy that he was able to let that himself be vulnerable and just tell the truth as it was on camera like this. So uh, yeah, so his life was pretty much destroyed. Uh, he was laughed at, he was ridiculed. Now he is, a, he was a senior chief. He wasn't some little guy, you know, I mean, not that it matters, but uh, I mean that it, but it's, you're still human, but I'm saying is he put in many years uh, at his job in the Navy for him to get to a point where he, you get ridiculed publicly. Um, it's a lot for anyone to take. And I brought that element in the movie because that's, it, it was part of the story of why Am I going out investing in this whole production, doing all this? Um, you know, it's not just for the for the sake of science. Of course, I'm into that as well, but for the sake of those humans who have real experiences and who are laughed at. And so Kevin Day represented all these folks as well. Uh, Gary Voorhees, who was with him on the ship. And there was another um, uh, um, a Navy officer also that we brought as a guest who, who was also a witness who talked about it. So these guys are just a representation of what is really going on when you are in the army army in the navy or a civilian talking about something like this you're gonna get hit so i'm hoping that with this film and also with what's been happening you know the pentagon releasing all these papers all these reports um, and with us bringing this film out more into the mainstream because of the other cast that we didn't talk about um, trying to bring it more to the mainstream so that we can have an open conversation 
this is not some crazy woo woo thing anymore. The Pentagon is now uh, talking about reports um, where uh, you know talking about abductions and uh, and uh, mm-hmm. and being in contact with uh, yeah. There was this uh, fifteen hundred page report that was just released. Uh, by the Pentagon talking about the effects of having, coming in contact with an alien uh, spacecraft, radiation, burns, nightmares. So it's starting to be more a mainstream mm-hmm. conversation. And I'm hoping bringing these guys' story in this film will, will add to this effort to make the conversation very mainstream. Oh, boy. Excellent. Because that was one of my questions is, who do you know will see this? So you can cause some credibility and that level of conversation. Let's finally acknowledge what's been going on for many decades, well, (laughs) for eons in history, actually, and openly discuss UFOs, UAPs. Do you have any knowledge of who may be privy to watching the film? Well, another thing we didn't talk about in terms of cast is somebody who's huge, who is in the film, William Shatner, uh, that's, <laughs> and Michio Kaku, yes. but that, oh. Michio Kaku is incredible, uh, most people know him, a uh, theoretical physicist, he's done so many incredible, um, I'm a fan, work. I'm a huge oh fan my of God. He's, he's a, and he's, the, he's such a joy to interview, oh my God, he's incredible, so he's in the film giving his insight and his knowledge but also the reason why I invited William Shatner uh, is specifically for that reason to well first of all he actually has a lot of experience in the world of paranormal and UFOs Mm -hmm. and things like that and of course Star Trek that's of course that's sci-fi but he he actually himself has a lot of experience in the paranormal world so I invited him for that reason but also to bridge the gap to get us to the mainstream so that people you know are more open hey William Shatner is in this movie let let me see what that's about so that's what I'm hoping will happen uh, with him being in the cast with the story being so strong and uh, that that more of the mainstream will be watching this and of course everybody in the UFO world hello I mean everybody should be watching this every because this has never been done before it just hasn't and just for that sake and for the type of data that we ended up collecting it's not just those flying sausages that you see on YouTube I mean you saw the film incredible unusual things were recorded and studied uh we can talk a little bit about that because it's so important Uh, that every UFO person should be watching this. Uh, we've seen, of course, we were able to recapture the Tic Tacs, which is insane. Um, stuff literally raining down, crazy stuff. Uh, also, this phenomenon of, of, of an opening and closing with objects in it. This, I mean, this is insane that we were able to capture that in uh, the film. So just for those reasons, every UFO person should be watching this film. And also people who are into consciousness, into uh, human evolution, into self-development, because um, it's not just about UFOs. It's, It's about, wait a minute. First of all, it helps with discernment. That's what I like to do. Not everything that you see is what you think it is. Look at how the way to study a paranormal phenomenon, but also our place within the universe. If we are um, discovering these phenomena that nobody can figure out what it is, not even scientists, not even NASA, not even anybody, well, wait a minute, what does that tell us about the fabric of space-time? What does that tell us about our, our reality? What does that tell us about potential technology what I mean you see so so I feel this film covers a wide range of audiences in my opinion absolutely and as William Shatner said so aptly crazy when he looked 
at the film footage and saw what was going on. And he made sure we heard it a few times, but crazy. It really is as though you had this timeline. You actually had an insane timeline for a film, five days. Who does that? Who says, I know. I'm going to commit this <laughs> level of time, equipment, and finances and dream to creating this. And in five days, there is no doubt you are heard out in the universe because they absolutely showed up and said, okay, we'll play. Yeah, exactly. And speaking of science, you know, the scientists who were in the movie, they're totally not open to anything that has to do with consciousness or communication. Or, so it was like, okay, I'm on my own here, which is good though, because that's what this film was about. So that's good. But, but yes, it was like, wait a minute, what am I doing here? Oh my God, all this investment and the, the equipment and the energy and the time only five days. Why those five days? Why not those five days? You know what I mean? So I really had to kind of find my own uh, inner guidance and connection and everything else to, you know, and really focus to intend to have something significant happen. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to make it this way or that way. Like I didn't say, oh, we have to. I just said, just something significant happened and sure enough it was beyond my expectation beyond I mean you saw the stuff that we captured is is uh, is I think it could be reality changing I mean it's it's like uh, Kaku was saying it shatters our understanding of reality itself mm. and so mm. and so I feel like we we captured and we touched on something huge so I think I was heard <laughs> I think you yeah absolutely I I loved it for that reason it was so exciting and one of the things they touch on towards the end of the movie is that this isn't the end that the scientists want to keep pouring over the data and the material that's gathered because they want to keep finding out what's going on. So I, of course, was left very curious since the movie was complete and we know it's going to be released May 3rd, May 10th. What else has been unearthed about what you discovered? Yes, so the, the most significant one uh, is that opening and closing uh, phenomenon, which is insane. We kept getting more and more data about the actual objects and things like that. However, uh, it's hundreds of hours of data. You have to think about, like I said, I don't know how many cameras and how many, you know, all of them running 24 seven for five days and five nights. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just one hour of video is 216,000 frames because it's 16, uh, 60 minutes, um, 60 frames per second. And so, so that's a huge amount of data. They're still going through it as we speak. So even though the film is coming out now, people can see what we have so far but it's still going to take them I think months before uh, they fin they go through all of the data but also they are planning on uh, writing a, a paper a scientific paper which is incredible that also has never been done before um, for peer review so it's a big deal. It's not something that you just put out uh, like that. So I don't expect to see a lot of information released very soon after the movie. I think we need to give them a little bit more time. Okay. And just let them know. Inquiring minds want to know. So yes. <laughs> I, I would love to be in the loop when this happens in stages. Uh, you know, and what fodder this is for people with minds like that to have material like this to pour over. I think that's so exciting. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, so here you are and, and you're being presented right now. I know many people know you, you're world renowned. And yet if through this podcast, you're being introduced, and I hope this is so, to some new people, 
they're hearing about a best-selling author, someone who's a speaker all over the world, somebody who is a writer, a director, a producer, a creator of films and material. But I also want to broach a little bit on the full picture of who you are. <clears throat> Excuse me, because you have the gift, Caroline, of offering energetic healing. And you do very exquisite work around consciousness. Do you still offer sessions and do work on this? Not to, on one on one because I'm too busy with this project. Uh, once in a while, like if I have an opening, I, I would do that. But uh, my schedule is too busy right now for individual sessions. Um, you know, like I said, occasionally, but uh, I've done this for so many years and trained so many people uh, that I have a massive library on my website. A lot of people can just uh, go to those libraries and benefit a lot because it's not just sessions, it's classes, it's training, it's my meditation it's free stuff too to listen to and so uh that's kind of how I'm dealing with that part of uh, <laughs> the process but you know I mean I'm glad you mentioned this because to me it's not like here I am I'm a healer here or I'm a teacher here I'm an author here and now I'm a filmmaker because at the base of all of these things is me, is who I am. And so even when I'm right now focusing on making a film, I'm still kind of the energy that goes through the film, which is about healing, which is about consciousness expansion, which is about uh, evolving the human mind, mastering the human mind. And so that's why I feel like uh, the classes or the appearances or the films are just a different expression of the same energy. So people can still benefit is what I'm saying. For even my last film, when you just watch it, even though you didn't do an actual energy session, but you get that kind of shift in your consciousness that uh, I feel happens through all my work, I'm hoping. <laughs> Amazing. And what about the YouTube channel? Are you still doing healings now and then on the YouTube channel? Yeah, so people can go to the YouTube. I have, obviously it's YouTube, so it's totally free. Uh, I don't know, but I have like 150 sessions or something. So people can take advantage of that. And I also do uh, YouTube live as well. Like I go on and do something. I'm going to be doing some of that um, in a month or so as well. So definitely go to the YouTube channel, Omnia Media on YouTube. Uh, Caroline, Corey, they'll find me there for sure. Good. I'm subscribed. So I want to keep up with that because I have some of your, um, you know, purchase things from your website and I really appreciate it. Frankly, I use them over and over again, because even though sometimes you're working on somebody else, I can feel it over here. I mean, I feel shifts and I feel puddled and I feel like some, something magical, phenomenal is going on. And even though you, I guess energy is everything. That's the bottom line. You're working on someone else, but I'm still receiving. Exactly. And that's the idea. We're working on a quantum level. You know, there's entanglement, there's a quantum field connecting everything and everyone. And so, and what I'm uh, helping with are patterns. And so these patterns are part of uh, many, many people's consciousness. That's why usually I choose a certain subject you know, relationships or detox or this or that, because I can sense those patterns, very, you know, very much ingrained in many people. So I could be working on you and the neighbor <laughs> could be benefiting because they have the same pattern. So that's, that's what's so cool. Yeah, that's what's so incredible. I have people who email me about sessions I've done on my website like seven years ago or 10 years ago. Just think about that. The energy that is in that uh, clip, you know, or that recording that was done 10 years ago on someone else that happened to, that helped this person here today mm -hmm. overcome an, an addiction 
I mean, that's pretty crazy, you see? So, so that's why this work is, is so extraordinary. It's, uh, uh, you start to think in terms of multiple dimensionality, you know, as opposed to this very linear way of thinking of matter being outside consciousness and so on and so forth. Do you mind if I dig a little deeper? Because I'm, my experience is that you're incredibly powerful. And when I witness you doing this work, somehow you have a knowingness or an ability to see almost through someone's being that you can talk about organs or the trauma or where things are located or exactly what to let go of and how. And it's pretty amazing and cool. And so I, honestly, I was a little paranoid. I met you in person, yay, at the Conscious Life Expo a few months ago when you spoke. And that was very exciting for me after having you on the show. And there was a little piece of me wondering, like, do you turn it on and off? Are you seeing through me? How much do you know? How does that work for you? Well, you know, since I was a child, I could see that sort of energy. And so uh, that's kind of how I got on, on, you know, on this journey, because I could see beings, I could see through people, I could see things that would happen to them the next day. I would, yeah, I mean, things like that. So oh, I've always oh. had that, that ability. And so it's not that, so now, of course, I didn't know, I thought, oh, everybody does that. It's no big deal. So, uh, <laughs> but of course, it, it was with time that I realized, wait, no, not everybody's doing it, you know? So what is that? How, how does it work? How, and am I, like, am I making things that, like, I was really testing myself to know how things were happening before for because I realized uh, a certain responsibility like wait can I just tell someone like okay they need to go to the doctor like tomorrow because blah 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 or am I going to freak them out or so I felt this huge sense of responsibility and so I really took the time to study and understand the mechanics of consciousness and guidance and discernment 20 years to develop specific methodologies to be clear, to be specific and so on and so forth. And so at this point, uh, part of this ability or this, this methodology is to be on and not on at the same time. So what I mean by this, like now as I go about my day, I can see through everybody's you know bodies and stuff and everything but it gets very overwhelming so it's not that I turn it off it just that it is off like I mean it, it it's just not something I'm focused on but if you ask me I can so easily like go there like it, it, I don't need to prepare and like do a whole meditation I could just like see it because I've done it so much so many times and so that's kind of how it works for me and so you ask me something I can see it I retrieve it I transcribe it I mean I tell you what I see I see what needs shifting so on and so forth and then I just move on I don't need to kind of be in that energy otherwise it's way too overwhelming I would imagine and from your perspective you know, as metaphysicians, we are told that the body is self-healing and that anything that's an aberration just shouldn't be. There's usually something else going on. Is that 100% true or and can literally anything be healed? Or sometimes a cigar is a cigar and somebody really has something manifesting that maybe can't be handled in a healing session. Everything can be healed, but you have to understand how this problem happened in the first place. So uh, what happened is for many people have cancer, many people have diabetes, many people have the same condition, but they didn't all create it in the same way and for the same reason. That's why it's not one size fits all. It's not one answer for everyone. That's why I do the exact same technique with one person, but then, and then they heal from a you know, phase four um, cancer and another person uh, doesn't, even though they're in the beginning of a cancer phase. And so uh, why, if, if the method works, it's because 
uh, each person has the same ability, same, ab because if you didn't have the ability, then no one would heal. I mean, I mean period. If, if nobody, if, if it wasn't something innate, then energy medicine would simply not work. If it worked with one person, it means it works, right? So it does work, but with certain individuals, when you have a condition, you have to go back to the root cause. Sometimes the root cause is not in this lifetime. Sometimes it's in another lifetime. And sometimes it's a karmic thing. You have to understand the karmic um, condition that is associated with this particular condition. And so, so then you have to work on the frequency of this karma. For example, you, um, let's talk about, it doesn't have to be an illness, but it could be something like a mental thing. Let's say in another lifetime, you are afraid to speak up because when you spoke, you were punished or whatever, you were put away, you're a scientist. And then they said, you're crazy. Let's put you, you know, you're talking nonsense. You're saying the planet is, um, revolves around the sun, whatever. So you're afraid to speak up. You come back in this lifetime and all of a sudden you have a condition in your throat. For example, does that make sense? Yes, so does. you don't yes, know, you go to all the endocrinology, endocrinology, oh my God, endocrinologists. endocrinologists. <laughs> yeah. yeah, speaking of speaking. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, you go through all the medical, physical, blah, 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 nothing is happening. You take the drugs. And so if you don't go back to the root cause, this condition is going to continue uh, appearing or it would disappear and reappear. And that's one of the component. Uh, sometimes you see what I'm saying? So, so it's a karmic, it's, it's something that you brought from another experience that was not, that's just what karma is. It's a condition that was not resolved. That's it. And it's still waiting for it to be resolved in this lifetime. So that's kind of the problem. Sometimes you didn't resolve it now we're getting too technical here, but depending on the time that we spend not resolving it in another lifetime applies to this lifetime. So if it's seven years there, it's seven years here, but then you can shrink it. You can see it's, it gets like a little technical, but the, the bottom line is it's, it's about a karmic energy uh, that needs to be resolved, not just what's happening in this lifetime. Amazing. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm somebody who, who quote unquote, has arthritis and perhaps bone on bone in the hip area. And I have tried a lot. And God knows I am willing because I love being free and, you know, hiking and swimming and dancing. And, and they're at a point where it's like hip replacement, which to me is like, oh, horrific. Um, so I ask because I, as a metaphysician, there's also I don't know about if that I feel shame, but I certainly feel disappointment. Like what is happening with me that I cannot heal this and whomever I go seek thus far has not been able to heal this stem cells and things like that, that are very cutting edge. So it's, yeah, it's a very interesting anomaly. So for in your case, it's your mother. And I feel like your mother is attached to your spine and so uh, it's like there's this huge blockage in your lower spine uh, because of uh, your mother. So we, you know, it's kind of, I will just leave it at that right now. <laughs> but do you relate to what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, oh my gosh, it's just so weird too, because my mom has had precise problems. I mean, she's got Alzheimer's now, so she can't even facilitate assistance for herself. Um, and qu it's quite a history. However, she's had really particular physical issues that have manifested in my body, which also like has been very frustrating. So I'm aware, but like, that's very interesting. Yeah, so like I see your mother, you see how like I see, so because you asked me, so now I see. So, so I see your mother and she's like attached to your spine. And so that creates a whole blockage in the energy that's going down to your hips and to your leg actually. Yep. And so, and your brother, there's a brother energy uh, uh, also 
back on the left shoulder. Uh, also, that uh, it's in. I don't know if this brother is born or not, but there was an, a brother um, also that has to do with your imbalance. I feel like your left shoulder is making an imbalance with your hips as well. Okay, a well, lot. Thank you. That's very <laughs> gracious and, and good that everybody gets to have a little something, something <laughs> view of what you can do like that. And I do have a brother um, and that's it, just the two of us. So I'm going to run with that in my life <laughs> and see what I can create. I know, Caroline, and thank you. I know that uh, you talk about DNA reconfiguration. You talk about zero point healing techniques. I just know, even when I see those, th say those things that you do, like I get goosies because that's so exciting to me. Can you unpack that a little bit? Two big subjects, I know, but just give us a view of DNA reconfig and zero point healing techniques. Yeah. So just for the people who are watching right now, like I told you about your brother and your mother, uh, but you know, if we were doing a session, I wouldn't just leave you like that. Obviously, like now I'm helping shifting and giving you some ideas to go in that direction. But normally for people to understand, I would help you kind of see the root cause uh, why they are attached there and, and undo, undo, and which gets me to the DNA question. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you know, DNA is information. It's codes, right? It's, it's, in, it's a code. It's information that tells the cell, okay, so now you're going to rotate this way at this frequency, and then you're going to clump together a bunch of cells and appear you're going to make blue eyes blonde hair you know that's what the dna is in terms of the physiology it, it's a co it's information so so information inside your cells so what i notice is that um when people are stuck or they have blocks um and i look at the root cause okay what is that i see patterns again patterns of I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. Well, your DNA doesn't have that information, didn't have that information. You didn't come in as a baby thinking I'm not good enough. <laughs> you're born perfect. You know, you're, you, you're like a clean slate. You're like, okay, here I am, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to live my life. So where does this, the information when you grow up and you have emotional blocks and your parents do this and you're friends do that and you start to create you have emotions you react to situations and then which give you belief systems you know if if my boyfriend left me and my father left me therefore i'm not good enough therefore i'm a failure when you have these emotions and these thoughts where do you think these thoughts are going it's it's not like you just have a thought and it's just like abstract and it's like it's gone it disappears these thoughts are actual frequencies are actual patterns and these patterns interact they don't go anywhere you're not telling it to other people you're telling this to yourself i am a failure you're saying and so you, this information stays with you and it goes in your cells you're you're talking to your cells so you end up adding this information to your dna to your cells to on the dna level and the way i know this is because of course i mean i see the subtle energy so i'm reading the pattern in your cells and i'm saying and the cell is saying i'm not good enough i'm a failure uh you know i'm going to be abandoned so the way to undo this it's to basically take out the information that you put in. You're the one who said you're a failure. Nobody told you you're a failure when you were a baby. You made that up. And so it's very easy. You start talking to yourself and undo, take out the information by saying, I ask and intend. It's a formula, you know. Uh, I ask and intend to release the belief system that I'm not good enough from every cell in my body, from every aspect of my DNA. You, you know, you take it out, you breathe it in, you inhale, you exhale, and you visualize information coming out of your body. And it sounds crazy for a lot of people who are not into this, but I tell you, you feel it, 
you know it, something just leaves you, you, you know, the more you do this. And before you know it, you undo what you put in, in on a DNA level. And we know that the DNA is, is mutable because we know that the DNA mutates when it has cancer, for example, it starts one way and then it changes. So if it changes, it means it's not fixed. That's all we need to know. If it's not fixed and it could be changed this way, it means it could be changed that way. Does that make sense? This is scientifically proven that the DNA changes. And so, so that's why, so all you have to do, but of course, you know, you can do it with intention. You can do it with frequency. You can send vibration. You could do it with light. You could do it with all sorts of uh, ways, but the DNA is programmable, reprogrammable, deprogrammable. And that's the level we should be working at. Yeah. Totally. hundred percent. Yep. It's the fast, easy way to get where you want to go. And then some, and quickly, um, not a lot of talking, just energy is amazing. And for folks who are fascinated, I hope you are, I am by what Caroline is talking about. She has a course on her website that literally teaches you how to facilitate this method, how to actually be a healer in this methodology she's talking about. So you can do this yourself or do this for people, clients, and so forth. It's really worth it. So I just wanted to let people know you don't have to, you know, feel like you're hearing just this much. You can actually get this program that she's talking about and learn how to do it on your own. Um, you know, your, your bio, Caroline, reads that you have had numerous UFO encounters. I'm, I don't know how much you're willing to talk about, but of course, I'd love to hear it all. But if you would be willing to pull back the curtain on what your UFO encounters have been and any particulars around that. Well, actually for me, it was more uh, extraterrestrial consciousness encounters than actual UFOs, but also UFOs, both. Um, that's what, you know, because, but when you talk about, you know, I see beings and I, you know, they materialize and things like that, it just sounds so crazy uh i mean i mean you know to some people but when you talk about ufos i mean it's a different type of crazy <laughs> but in the film i wanted to to focus on the stuff that everybody sees in the sky knows what a ufo is we we're talking about at least even in the mainstream and so um so what i mean i could talk about one very striking uh, ufo encounter actually it was right above my house uh i remember it was labor day uh, and so I was actually inside my house and all of a sudden I felt like, mm, go out, go out. It was like nine 30 at night or something. So I go out and I look up and there's these three balls of light and they're like bouncing like this in, 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 in each other. Like they're just like bouncing off of each other like that. And I was like, oh, is that, and then of course the first thing I think, oh, no, no, that's like uh, labor day. Maybe they're doing some, um, you know, searchlight things, you know, whatever. And I was like, no, it's. That's not how, I mean, if they're doing searchlights there, you know, it would crisscross. It wouldn't bounce like this instead of, you know, off of each other. So anyway, I, I kept looking up and, and then feeling, I started feeling, wait, is this a UFO? I feel, I feel a presence, you know, I feel something. And so, so then I said, well, I'm going to communicate if there's something, then something would happen. So I started saying, well, if you are a UFO, you know, like, like show me more. So so the, the three balls of light suddenly split into four and then they split into six. I said, okay, show me more. So then I started walking like half a mile in one direction outside my house and they were like following me in this direction. And then I changed direction and they're like following me in this direction. I mean, it is so obvious. At one point they were like eight balls of light like this. Uh, I mean, it was so obvious there was some sort of communication happening. They could hear me. They were responding to me. And, and then it, they just kind of dissolved. I mean, so that one was the most like striking the, the, and pretty recent, actually. That was like uh, last year, I want to say. 
Yeah. So <laughs> one of them. <laughs> it's yeah. funny when I watch you, I've seen all your films now. When I watch you on your films, um, I was hitting my boyfriend and saying, oh my God, you know who she looks like? She looks like the main character from Daryl Anka's books called Shards, where I mean, he wrote these amazing books, uh, really good novels. And they're about hybrids and people in other universes, parallel universes. And his main character, of course, is this beautiful, adorable female, and she's the heroine. And <laughs> you actually really look like her as a woman. What, what's, what's, the, what's the, the story? What's the, the author? Uh, well, it's Bashar, Daryl Anka. Right. Oh, you know, oh. He, oh, he's the, he, he wrote a book. He wrote oh. a series. Yes. Oh. I've, I've read them up and I think there'll be five altogether. And there's a couple oh, of wow. her out and her oh. picture. You can even go to Amazon and see her picture. And it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, a teenage Caroline Corey. It's just amazing. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. So that's then I was like, Caroline is a, she's a hybrid. She's totally a hybrid. <laughs> Oh, I have no doubt about that. Like, I totally don't feel, yeah. <laughs> you're so sure. connected, you know, even, uh, yeah, you're definitely so connected. I love that, by the way. I think that's really exciting. It's exciting. So here you are, you're on the precipice. You finally finished this project. I can't imagine what went into it and you completed it, a dream. So what are your next steps at this point? Where are you at with the film? Where is the film at? Well, we're just, you know, so launching it now. So it's a lot of promotion to make sure people hear about it, see it, watch it, and just to see, you know, um, how that's going to, uh, you know, kind of unfold. Um, and also from, a again, scientific point of view, not just scientific, I mean, even the government is not putting out information like we are. So I'm, I'll be curious to see the effect that's going to have yeah. with all the reports that they are releasing. So, so it's, it's, it's interesting. I want to see where that takes us first but having said that I always have in the back of my mind the next thing the next thing I have some ideas uh, it will always I think it will always have a film component um, so what happens is I will um, use those films to do lectures and classes because the information that we are capturing, whether it's UFOs or consciousness or mind matter, it's, it's, it, there's so much more to understand and to learn from. So, um, so that's kind of what I'm going to be doing a, a next feature with uh, conferences and classes uh, around these topics for sure. Okay, and folks who are interested in following you in this and learning more, should they go to omnianuniverse.com? That's for the classes. That's for, you know, healing classes, consciousness classes. Um, you know, it's the same as carolinecorey.com. There's hundreds of, of classes and sessions in my YouTube channel. But for the movie, uh, they should go to atairinthesky.com. And uh, that website has uh, all the information about what, what we've done and the link to purchase the movie. So um, you could just go there and then you'll see all the platforms, Amazon, iTunes, you know, and that link gets updated the more platforms we get. So uh, yeah, atairinthesky.com. And anything you want to say here at the end, Caroline, to the listeners? Uh, I just feel that this is such an important time in history. Wow. I mean, it's not, we're not just talking about UFOs. We're talking about uh, government putting out uh, reports that we would never ever think would be possible like talking about abductions and sexual encounters with extraterrestrials like what so this is an important turning point in our history and all the folks who are into consciousness or woo woo stuff or paranormal stuff and all these subjects i feel my work is hopefully going to help empower them, you know, to bring more validation, more credibility, like, hey, 
I'm out in the mainstream, out, I'm out in the public talking about it, putting out all this data, all, you know, with the, all these scientists and, you know, credible, measurable information so that you do your work, like just, you know, stop hiding, continue to be out there to, to speak up, to speak your truth. Uh, if you believe in energy medicine, if you believe in consciousness and meditate, it doesn't matter. I feel like um, there is no more uh, ridicule. There's, it, it, we've, we've made, we've, I think, uh, made that turn. And I'm hoping that my film and my work is that additional validation and empowerment tool for you. Mm. What a great way to end this, Caroline, because it harkens back to where we started, you know, for people like the Kevin Days, who had a real experience with a UFO, and it was reported through all the right chains of command, and then they were turned, it was turned around upon them, perpetrated against them, ridiculed, uh, had families and careers taken away from them. And, you know, you can't imagine even emotionally what it does to a person who really did have that experience. I love that there is hope through your films to turn this around and give them and this experience a voice. Folks, if you're interested and want to see the movie, please do check it out at a tear in the sky dot Calm. And I end today's show with this quote from H.E. Davy: The undiscovered is not far away. It's not something to be found eventually. It is contained within what is right in front of us. The essence of reality is being born right now. It has never existed before. Reality is constant creation and destruction. And in this constant change is something unborn and undying something that cannot be approached through the known nor the past. And in this space, the undiscovered and ever-changing moment exists, a moment containing all possibilities, the totality of existence, absolute reality. Reality is now. And in the now, we can experience the true nature of the universe and the universal mind. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Please like, comment, and share this show with all your friends. I do read all your comments. And next week on the show, the guest featured will be Sister Dr. Jenna, who's a spiritual mentor, author, media personality, and speaker. Sister Jenna hosts the America Meditating radio show. She's got a new book out, and she's the founder of the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Museums. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, a tear in the sky.com and be sure to create all your dreams energetically and in reality.